Hi, this is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche, bringing you another fun-filled video. Now I'm laughing because I really hope people think this is as fun as I think this is as fun as I think. <laughs> or I hope people have as much fun watching as I do filming. <laughs> so Today we're going to do some interesting stuff. I'm going to show you uh, some new finds. I'm going to show you the latest dying to stitch, dying to stitch kit that just came in the mail today. Uh, I'm also going to give you some helpful hints about how to match linen to your pattern. So that's, uh, that's interesting. And then I have some goodies to share with you. I'm just giving you a hint. You don't know what that is, but that's okay. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm on call, so I'm gonna check my phone periodically, make sure that the little beep doesn't get drowned out. First things first, uh, I already showed you a lot of my of my uh, my sampler of Louisa Snow. I am finally on the color, so I wanted to show you how the color looks on this fabric. I think it looks awesome. Um, I'm just beginning to do the color. I am finally finished with the majority of the brown, which was caterpillar. What's interesting is she, she, this, this red is called clay pot, classic color works clay pot. It's very pretty. It's not red, it's pink. And it doesn't quite look like that pink. This is the original, but that's okay. It never does. So anyway, I've been feverishly working on this. I absolutely want to finish this. And hopefully I, tomorrow, I, I'm going to sit home all day and stitch. Today I ran around and did errands and cleaned and did laundry. Okay. So that is, that's one thing. Um, first I'll show you some of my, my vintage finds this week. Uh, first thing is this is not vintage. I thought it was because it was listed under antiques. So when I went through antique spools and I searched it and I went on eBay under an the antique heading, this came up and it was almost done. It was like, had like an hour left and I, and I looked at the picture and it was like $20. It was up to $20 and I said, oh my God. That's, that, that's a good deal. Look how cool this is. So I bid on it. I actually got it for $22. Then I got it in the mail and realized that it is not an antique. Somebody made it. They put a lot of work into this. I don't know about a lot, but they put some work into making this pin cushion. Then it's got a dowel and then it's got this disc and the little dowels. And here's the name of the person who made it. And it looks awesome. It really does. My idea is to take some of the old, the old spools, and when I do a project, put my, my floss around the spool and use it off the spool and put it on something like this, which I think will look awesome. So it's sitting on my coffee table right now. My coffee table is pretty much where I stitch. I put my feet up on the, on the coffee table, sit on the couch and stitch. But uh, pretty cool. Here's another gem. I just liked it. I thought it was very pretty. And then I looked at the bottom and it says, Royal Winton, made in England, summertime. Hmm. And I found out that these are collectible and that people pay a lot of money for this stuff. It's just so pretty inside and out. What a magnificent 
pin cushion this could make. I found a Christmas sign. Oh, and that's probably, this is probably made, I'm not sure, but 1950s, maybe before. This is a 1970s item. It's a little basket, Christmas basket. It's even got the little detail inside. It's made by a company called Flambro. Probably was in the 5 and 10 store. This is very cute. It's actually made quite well. Let's go through our holidays. And then I found this. <laughs> so it's a dish. Obviously pumpkin face with a cute cat on it. Once again, quite a nice quite a nice pincushion, although the pincushion would cover this. Who cares? You get the idea and you see the, the cat. What else? Oh yeah. I absolutely couldn't believe this when I found it. This is one of those sewing caddies. Um, this is not antique. This one is vintage, but it's magnificent. It is made in Let's see, Lebanon, New Hampshire. It's just about near mint condition. Uh, all handmade and really beautiful. Just lovely wood. Um, I can't believe the condition of this thing. I, I, I couldn't walk away from it. This I found at a little antique mall, one of those that has little, little the kiosks in it. And uh, I said, wow, I'm going to take that home with me. Okay. And then I found some of this. Oh, this is an interesting find. It is a whole bunch of trimming. And I'm just going to go through this with you because some of it is quite nice. I'm not going to show you every piece, although that is a pretty color. Oh, that's my son. I will be back. Back again. I just had Indian food with my son, so that was awesome. But <laughs> anyway, let me show you some of the trimming that I got. And this whole bag was $4, which is crazy. I got this huge amount of this trimming, which is not that exciting. I do have a large amount of it. Um, what's more exciting is this. I just want to see if you can see that. That's, that's very nice. Um, probably about a yard of this. Um, these are just nice trimmings. This one is actually really cool because it, it's little Easter eggs. There's probably two or three yards on this thing. And then this one. I'm just going through this quick because I don't want to uh, bore you. That one, which is quite nice, just came off of here. This one, which is really awesome. It's like a daisy trimming. It's only about a yard of this, but it's really nice. Right? And then this fabulous trimming. Wow, that is so cool. And then a whole bunch of this. This is all just, I have wide and I have not so wide. Uh, this is velvet, a whole thing of orange velvet. And then a whole bunch of these. This one is red velvet. And then there's yellow ribbon and yellow velvet and some nice green velvet and, what, and then look at this really nice 
ribbon. And what's cool is that you know this is old because I'm very a little more well made than they are now because they've got made in the USA on them. We've got a whole bunch more in here, different colors, mostly primary colors. The yellow can be dyed. Just this one has got, I don't know, this is some sort of banding, but just nice. Made in the USA stuff. So I did find that. Uh, let's see. I guess I'll put that away later. So that was an interesting, that was an interesting find. Okay, so I showed you the that I showed you that. Okay. So this came in the mail today. Where did it go? Uh oh. I have stuff that came in the mail that I cannot find. Let's see what I did with it. I probably put it on the floor, so just one second. Yes, I did. Oh, sorry, everything's on the ground. Oh, I have one more, a few more finds, which I put on the ground. <laughs> This, have you ever seen anything as cute as this, this container? It says Empire Pure Cotton Silver Crane Company, sewing thread made in England. It's a big spool container. Never seen anything like it. Sorry about that, though. Everything fell on the floor, so. <laughs> I have this guy. Um, it's a carved wood, and you can easily fit a project in here. Pretty neat, and I think I can make a kit out of him. I would like to see what somebody can do with that. And then, this frame. Look how cute it is with the kitties sitting on it. This carved frame. This guy was a thrift store find, as was the ribbon. Uh, you could put a little kitty project in here, or I'm going to put a picture of my kitty in here. Pooter. <laughs> okay, so, still looking for that thing. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> here it is. I don't get thumbs down for me bending over and moving away and all that. Um, I like thumbs up and thumbs down makes me feel sad, but you can't please everybody and uh, this is for fun. So I hope you're having fun with me. This is like as if you're sitting in my home and we're talking and I'm looking for something and somebody walks in and the phone rings and, and all that. Anyway, this is hot off the presses. This is from the Kindred Spirits Dying to Stitch uh, series, and I'm a part of that. And this is by Heartstring Samplery, and this is called Flag Day at Twin Gables. Now, here's my take on this. Just want to show you that. It's very pretty. It comes with all this stuff. It comes with fabric. I don't know what the fabric is, so I just opened this. Um, it comes with R and R Vintage Homespun, R and R Reproductions Vintage Homespun. It comes with this really pretty little piece of fabric, wool, and all these nice colors of thread. Now, when I get, make my little kits, um, I actually give portions of colors too. Uh, I probably give even more than this actually, but just enough probably to do the project. I guess. 
My take on that Twin Gables is, is Twin Towers. I was born in New York. I moved to Florida when I was 30 years old. So I went to school, medical school, college, you name it, in New York. My brother and my sister live in upstate New York. And uh, I used to take the train into New York City on a regular basis with my girlfriends. We went to the clubs, hard to believe now, but yes, we went to the clubs and we stayed out all night and then we would take the train home in the morning and I went on weekends to Macy's and to Bloomingdale's and for many years we went to the city. I've been to the Twin Towers and the thought of them not being there is still weird to me. I have yet to go back to see the, the museum. I'd like to. Anyway, I somehow think that this Twin Gable, this Flag Day at Twin Gables is the Twin Towers and that's what I think when I look at it. I am going to ask Beth and see if that's what she she meant. But anyway, here it is again. So that came in the mail today. I'm going to show you some other stuff that came in the mail. This little kit called Frog Notes and Quotes. This was an eBay purchase. I probably would not have purchased this had I not bought something from a buyer and then looked to see what else they had so I can get combined shipping. And it's adorable. It's, it's some sort of kit that's got everything you need to make a post-it note cover, I guess, and even the post-it notes. I've never seen this before. It's from the old Colonial Designs. Frog notes and quotes. This kit was 40 bucks, or at least there's a label on it that says. And um, it's real cute. So I got that in the mail. This also came in the mail. This is one of those Erica Michaels petites. I have another one. I have not done it yet. I really am going to start this. Uh, the petites come. This one's called, by the way, Home at Christmas. And the petites come with a little piece of 40 count silk gauze. These are meant to be made, they're real small. I heard they're not too hard. The question is how do you keep the silk gauze taut? I, have, I saw that people sometimes take a piece of cardboard and, and make an opening big enough for the silk gauze and then tape it from behind. Um, I'm gonna watch a YouTube video and see. If anybody has worked with these silk gauze, I have never done it. I, this is my second kit though because it was, a, again, I saw it, I was like, oh, that's so cute, I'm, I'm going to get combined shipping. And if anybody could let me know, please do, but that's awfully cute. So that came. This came, uh, Sarah Stewart Hardman, and it's by Needlework Press. This is the original sampler on the front. It's really nice. See the, bur see the kind shepherd Jesus stands and calls his sheep by name. Gather he feeble in his arms and feeds each tender lamb. And it just has all you need. It has the red house. It has mom and pa there and animals and birds. And everything you can think of. It is just so pretty. And I saw it, I, I, hmm, nice. On the back, there is not, this is not a model because it's sort of pixelated. So I, I'm not even looking at that. So I, I'm looking at this. Very pretty. What I like about Needlework Press is the way that she does her charts. They're all on very high quality glossy paper. They're attached, so a piece can't fall out. All the parts are, don't want to show you that, are attached. 
they're pretty big so anybody can see them and she's always got something interesting about the actual the uh, the sampler need a work press if you're I'm gonna let her know that I because I, I, I like her Facebook page so I'm gonna link my video just tell her I have this on here but you know if anybody really this is a nice a nice nice chart and I just liked it, so. so I got that. I've seen people do this. This is Pumpkin Patch Box by Jeanette Douglas. It, it came, it, it called it a kit. So I thought it came with the box, but I guess not. It still was a bargain price. I'm gonna have to find the box now. Very cute. But what really caught my eye was that it came with a lot of stuff. It comes with silks. A whole bunch of silk in this pack. And this embellishment pack. So you're not only getting, you're getting the silks, the embellishment, and the chart and it, it was a good deal very very pretty i don't i'm not crazy about this fabric i think it needs a real much more prim fabric to each his own i'm sure jeanette loves this fabric because that's what she chose this is awfully cute i do like the little kitty <laughs> so that came in the mail and of course now i have to match up fabric which shouldn't be hard and find this box somewhere. Same person. I got this all from the same person. Alphabets from old pattern books. What a neat book. Like, I gotta show you this. So what they did was they took these pages out of antique, really antique books, See, they have a whole bunch of them. Different pages out of these antique books. And they made them into patterns. Like, you get all the letters. And sometimes I change the words on different samplers and things. I'll, ch I'll put, like, my kids' names in them and stuff. Or I change the words, and I want to change the words. And I'm always looking for it. So I go online and I'm looking, looking, looking for, for interesting, interesting alphabets. And now I have the book of alphabets that is so cool. And talk about vintage antique. I mean, check this out. It's got the alphabet from here in here. Those neat. <laughs> anyway, it's a great book. So it's called Alphabets from Old Pattern Books by Lynn Skinner, in case you wanna, you're interested. I never would have been interested in this book and I'm real happy I bought it. I didn't even know what it was about. And, and then I bought this book called An Elizabethan Christmas for ornaments, embroidered ornaments that are so pretty. It's got full instructions on how to make these ornaments. I saw these when I went to England. Awfully pretty. What's not to like? They're not cross stitch, but they are embroidery and there's full instructions how to make them. Here, I'll show you some more. And there's even more. So I got that book. And then there's a piece of fabric that he had one piece of fabric and I threw it in there. Uh, amber linen. I don't know. I'm assuming this is white shelf because again, it's, it's real. Uh, you see how, how, uh, what's the word? Firm it is. Stiff. <laughs> I couldn't remember the word. It's real stiff. 
And if you are, are learning how to stitch on linen for the first time, then you want to you want to get a stiff linen. Otherwise, you're going to have you're going to have troubles. The stiffer the linen, the easier it is to see the holes. It's just the way it goes. Let's see if you can can you see the holes? You can now for those of you who've never done linen, you Ada where there's big holes, you're going to look at this and be like I still can't see that. Yes, you can, especially if you use magnifiers. Anyway, that's my my little thing for today. Uh, this is amber linen, probably white shelves. I hate telling you probably because I'm going to show this. All right, that has to be filed in my in my. That's my linen box back there. You see the big chest, the linen chest. Okay, I have some stuff on the ground. There's a reason I have it on the ground. Um, I got this from Ann and Pat. It's signed Ann and Pat. Oh, I feel like I'm, I have ooh, like something from celebrities, but Ann and Pat from, of course, R and R Reproductions. Uh, here is the second Kindred Spirits Club kit, Flag Day at Twin Gables. I'm just looking to see if they what they said. Uh, now there's a Facebook group. No, they didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it did come with a little explanation. I just saw that in the box. So, first time I'm seeing it. Let's talk about how to pick linen. How to pick linen for your project. It's easier to pick linen if you have your threads. Just to show you, this is a whole box of excess thread. It's a mess. A lot of it's thrown in here, but I could easily. There's a ton of threads in here. Some you, some are used, some are not. And this is my overdyed box for the most part. Um, oh, this was tomato. I was looking for this because <laughs> this goes for a project. Anyway. Um, so it's really helpful if you can pull some threads, and at least some of them, to before you look for the linen. It's not necessary. And the reason it's not 100% necessary is you can always change the threads. If you say, wow, I love that linen, but that red isn't right, you can change it. You can definitely change it. So let's go with another beautiful sampler. This is Harriet Elizabeth Co. Uh, done by Brenda Gervais. Once again on beautiful glossy paper. And that is the original sampler. And I hope you can see it's, it's quite distressed. And let's just look at this and see materials needed she did it on uh, Old Town Blend R and R, which is a basic, a basic, uh, pretty uh, nice linen. It uses sea foam embroidery, Swiss chocolate, collard greens, collard cinnabar, brandy, old red paint, parchment, mountain mix, mountain mist, old purple paint. I happen to have some of these in here actually. Um, in my uh, in here, I'm not going to dig through this with you. It will bore you. It will bore you, but just to, I certainly could go through this and get some of these, what is this, chili pepper? Anyway, so you want to pull your threads if you have them. If you don't, that's okay. And if you have the original sampler, for example, you know that your work is not never going to look like this. In fact, the original sampler probably doesn't look like this. The photograph just never gets it. But you look, you sort of look at it and you say, what can I see this sampler on? I'm just going to show you. This is a piece of my own linen. And this looks like it's 32 count. 
30, 30 count. Anywhere from 28 to 32. I think it's 30 count, actually, now that I'm looking at it. I'm sort of eyeballing it. I'm not 100% sure, but it's not a high count. Um, okay. So, you look at this and you say, I can see this, I can see this pattern completed on this. I can see the colors, and I know they're muted colors because I know these colors. Let's get an easier example just because I want to show you something that doesn't have a ton of colors. This is La Di Da, uh, uh, the uh, 103rd song. Very, very pretty. Done on impo what I'm going to call uh, impossible linen because I'm sure this linen doesn't exist. It doesn't. 40 count Lone Star Blend r, &R. It's just not made anymore and it's going to be hard to find. And I looked at this and this uses Grape Arbor, Grecian Gold, Forest Glade, Old Red Paint, and Black Crow. Grape, Gold, Forest. These are fairly um, muted. Again, they're not very bright colors. And again, this is my own linen. And I said I could see this some on this linen. Let's go through here and pick, just pick some colors, see if we can find some, some interesting colors, just for example, example's sake. Um, I have some, these are actually some limited edition colors I have. I bought some packets of them. I'm just looking to see if I can find old red paint or, here's old purple paint, perfect. Okay, just have to be sitting there. So this is old purple paint. It's muted. Yes, it goes. It goes. Um, and we know old red paint is going to be muted, a muted red as well. And I know I have it in here. And I could have started off, but I didn't. I'm just looking to see if it's readily available. I am not going through this whole thing, but anyway, we can certainly pretend this is used brick. We can look at used brick on here and say, do you like that? Anyway, so another way to do it, and I would do it with the, with the threads that you're actually going to use and put it up against the fabric. That's why it's helpful to go to a needlework store that has all the threads there that you can pull. Even if you don't buy the fabric there or don't like any of the fabric, you certainly could pull the threads and then work backwards. Beware of buying fabric on the internet because if you know the fabric, it's one thing. If you know the brand and say, wow, I love R&R, &R, there's never an R&R &R I don't like, that's fine. But if you're looking, if you look at the pictures on the internet and you look at the way the fabric actually comes out, it's never going to be right. Never. Especially the more distressed the fabric is, the less accurate. Try to think outside the box. That's another, another thing that I'm going to tell you. I'll give you a good example. This is Jingle All the Way by Not Forgotten Farm. It's, it's so pretty. And it uses a ton of DMC from there to there. How this could have so many colors in it is beyond me, but you know it's going to be real nice with all those colors. I am going to pull all this DMC and I was thinking of doing it on a darker linen because these were a lot of bright colors in here and I think we can, we can definitely pull it off. I'm going to pull all these colors and then double check it. So this is Needful Things. 
needful things. Um, excuse me, this is Jingle All The Way. This is Kitten Stitcher Linen. And Kitten Stitcher, it's called Oz, and it's got some red blotches in it. I thought that we could just pull it off with the red blotches. I don't know if you can see that. And, and this. Anyway, I have to pull, I've got to pull the fabric for that. Um, sometimes it's easy, not pull, pull the uh, threads. Sometimes it's easy. I just got this and I just got this not that long ago. It's called, it's called Peace to One and All by Homespun Elegance. I thought it's lovely. Now this is an example of how the fabric that you see isn't the fabric that's called for. It doesn't look like the fabric that's called for. It never does because you can't, you can't, the, the picture doesn't, it never gets it. And they actually use 30 count old milled java. So I actually, I, I looked and I said, wow, I sort of like that, that color and everything. And what I came up with was, yay, I do like 30 count old mill java. <laughs> and I'm going to do it. This is 30 count old mill java. And I think this, this is going to look real pretty on it. But does this look anything like? No, it doesn't. But that's okay. And then I'm going to pull the threads for it. And we'll see. Um, let me go get one that I've already pulled so I can show you, the, again, more process. I'm back. So now that I, I showed you, yeah, I think I like this fabric with this chart, like as if I told you, I think I like this fabric with this chart. Let me show you what, what you really do need to do to make sure that it's, it's perfect. So I have some examples of, of some projects that I have completely pulled here. When I say pulled, I mean I've got all the, all the thread and everything. And two of these I'm going to show you are, both of these are birds of a feather designs. One is using the call for linen, one is not. So let me show you. So this is birds of a feather, scared, silly. And first thing you do, like I said, is if you're really a fabric lover, you look at fabric and you say, and you say, do I like this fabric with this design? And I do. It's perfect. And, I, and it looks pretty close. And this is a fairly accurate picture, which is rare. And this fabric is Sparrow. This is Birds of a Feather fabric. It has, it has this in it. Uh, I didn't notice it till I bought it. It has an ink spot. I don't know if that's the way it was supposed to come, but I'm gonna leave it. Uh, it'll probably be covered. So I have the fabric. And then I said, let me see, do I, what do I think of the threads with the fabric? These are the called four threads, which I have. And voila, they go. And I know, where's my black? My black better be in here. Am I missing? Hmm, what is that done with charcoal? I don't think, um, I think I, I was going to use DMC 310, so I'm sorry, I don't have the charcoal in here, but that's, that's okay. Imagine you have DMC 310 with it. So anyway, you know it's going to look fine. You've seen, you see the picture, it's close, it looks good. So this is an example of one where I do have the fabric. And, up. Oh, nope, here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, a little faux pas. Uh, I was like, where's the black? It said use more than one skein, so I thought I was gonna use DMC, but apparently not. Ah, here you go. Now you can see.
perfect, right? Perfect. And this looks really good. Now you're gonna tell me that this fabric is not available anymore, and you're right, it's not. So this happens to be Sparrow, it's not available. So what happens when your fabric's not available? You're gonna have to come up with something else. This one also was done on Sparrow. This is Birds of a Feather Lost Spirits. Pretty, it's really pretty. And I found an alternative. This is Lakeside Linen uh, Vintage Autumn Gold. In fact, the moment I saw this, I knew it would work. And it looks even more like the picture, but this fabric is the same as the other one. It's done on Sparrow. So I looked at it and I said, oh, that's gonna work. I didn't even pull, I didn't even pull the thread. Then I pulled the thread. I don't know why I rolled them all up like this. And I put it together to say, what do these threads look like? That is a bright, these are bright colors. And muted, mixed together, go figure. But this is bright for the most part. Here we go. Wow, that looks good. And it's gonna look fabulous when done. Vintage Autumn Gold by Lakeside, which with the call for colors, it is easier just to pull call for colors and start messing around with colors, but I have messed around with colors many times. So that's a good example. Here's another example. This is a really pretty, uh, pretty one. This is by Sandra Sul Sullivan again, Homespun Elegance called Boo To You. And I liked him. I liked everything about him. And the call for, the call for linen was clay, it said here, Lakeside Linen's Clay Pot. She also gave alternatives, parchment and sweet, uh, parchment. So she said there was, par she, somehow, I think the small one is done on parchment. So this is Lakeside Linen's clay pot. You'll never find it. Forget it, never find it. <laughs> so I found something else. This is Vintage Sugar Ginger, again, Lakeside Linen. This one you're not gonna find either, just to let you know, it's hard to find, but you, there's, it's probably easier to get than clay pot. Vintage Sugar Ginger. And black. And I think that my color choice looks even better than hers, but that's just my, my opinion. This is a very nice pumpkin-y color. We, we didn't, we, this was unavailable. I said, let's, let's look at a color. It's got variegation to it. And then I saw this piece, which I got at the cross stitch cupboard, by the way. And it works. I think I would like to start this one pretty much soon because it's not going to take long and I think it's going to look awesome. I don't have nearly enough thread. I think I just threw that in there. I got to get more. Here's an example of pulling the call for. In general, I, I'm not a big, I, I'm not going to say I'm not a big fan. In general, I like variegated linens, dye, over dyed linens. This one, again, it's um, Sue Hillis, and it's Mary Noel. This one is done with a lot of schoolhouse red, and I've actually done some of it. This is a work in progress. I started it. And I like 
the called for linen, so I got the called for linen. I actually tried to match up linen, and I said there's nothing here that I'm thrilled about, so let's get the called for linen. And the called for linen on this one was Zweigart's Natural, which an oldie but a goodie. So sometimes fooling around with the linen is not the right thing to do. A good example of that. All right, now here is a, one more example. Uh, the Prairie Schooler, I'm going to do a better a small fish than an empty dish. Right there. We're fisher people here. My husband's out fishing as we speak, even though it's pitch black, but he's out there. So, this bored me. I looked at it, I said, cream linen doesn't do anything for me. And I, I, I said, I don't know, I, I just can't decide. So what did I do? I pulled, I didn't just pick a linen, I, I pulled the threads first on this one. And then I said, what is going to look interesting with this pattern? So here's all your threads. It's a combination of DMC and overdyed. Or it's, it was DMC, and then I changed out to the overdyed because I said, I have to get, jazz this up a little. I wanted the different. So we've got all these colors. And I said, what's going to look right? And I pulled a piece of, this is 40 count. Picture this plus, picture this plus Highland. And I, I'm completely changing it. But I can, ooh. <laughs> so I added some variegation to it, added a little bit of, of, of additional color by substituting out some DMC, and I changed the fabric to this fabric that looks like a swamp, a little swampy color. And you can now see, I hope you can see it. I can. I think it's gonna look fabulous. Better a small fish than an empty dish. Everglades Swamp here. So I think I've tried to show you how to, how to sort of match linen to your project. I don't suggest that you always use the call for linen because many times the call for linen isn't available. Just isn't. And, or you don't like it, it's boring. Uh, especially if it's an older, an older pattern. You know, there were no overdyed linens way back when. Everybody used white Ada, tan Ada, antique color Ada, um, and if there was linen, it was natural linen or bleached white linen, or combinations thereof. And I think you need to, to really, you can jazz up anything and change it and give your personality to it by changing out the linen and the threads but the linen is the easier way to go. When you start changing out linen and threads, like all of it, it, it it's hard, it's hard. Although I've done that too. <laughs> I usually, if I'm gonna change threads, I'll only change one or two. But try to, to think outside the box. Um, I'll show you something that, I'm, I'm a good example of linen that I don't know what I'm gonna do. This is Cats on Parade, I know I've showed this to you before by Blackbird Designs. I, uh, why did I get this? Because I, I like that trim. <laughs> I like the black lace on the drum and I've never made a drum. Although I'm probably gonna have somebody else finish the drum for me. The linen here is 30 count carved pumpkin by r, &R Reproductions. I had carved pumpkin and I sold it to somebody. I sold it to somebody. I, I just don't know what I was thinking. So I'm going to have to find an orangey linen for this. That lakeside would work great. There's also a ginger. Ginger would, would look good. I don't know what to do with this. I have to find orange. And then I thought about maybe dyeing my own orange linen for this. Might be a good opportunity. But this is a good example of you're not going to be able to find this linen. The color is easy because it's black. So you don't even have to pull black thread. You, can, you know what black looks like. You can just take a piece of something black up against it. 
but you have to think what what is going to look good what is going to make this look appealing this linen is beautiful and i never find it had it sold it and unfortunately that's that's the way it goes <laughs> Just to go through here, I just want to show you a few things that uh, other examples of, hey, this linen is not available. This one is another, um, another Blackbird Design Halloween Greetings. I like this one because of the, the threads used. It uses, what is the name of this thread? It's Jack-O-Lantern, which I think is the coolest floss ever. <laughs> so. Jack-o'-lantern floss, really super variegated floss, love it. This linen, the call for linen is 18th century sea glass. I have some gray linens which I think would look good. Hold on, I know you don't like this, but I'm gonna go into, I mean like when I just, to turn around into my e-designs i know you guys are probably like ooh, and see if i can find or either e-designs or heart stitch threads i have a bunch of that too and see if i can find a spooky linen that would go well with that i don't really have to pull this it's orange and black i can sort of look at it a gray linen would look good but why not have a linen with a little character and I know that this would work. This is called I'm Not a Witch. Mm, a little too bright, although I think it looks brighter there than it really does. So this is my process. I'm looking through it and I say, what, what would work well? Here's a lighter gray. This one is called Grandma's Old Linen. But it's not, it's not daring enough and again you don't want anything that's too crazy because you, you want your fabric to show this one's called ghost it's blue though no we want i think the gray is the way to go i'm just looking through all this to see if there's a gray one in here i'm looking through this with you now you see a gray one this is this one's called blair witch it's got green in it. Anyway, I think you see the process where I look through the linens and I say, which one, which one would look best with this? And I'm thinking outside the box because I know that that linen is not available or I know I don't like that linen or I say, wow, that linen looks very 70s or 80s. And it just bores me. This one is called Witch Saturday. Hmm. Not bad. A little too blue. Here's a pumpkin-y, there's some pumpkin-y linen in here, by the way, for my other one. That's a fairly, this is a very pumpkin-y color. This might actually look good. This one is called Laura Ingalls Wilder. And then, so I go through it, my linen, what I have, and there's nothing I really want. So then I gotta go through my other linens, and I'll look through, let's say, this is x Design, one of my favorite linen designers. Then I'll look through here and see, do we have anything gray? I have green. This is green Halloween linen, and this is orange okay so I found this this one is called uh, Jack jack-o'-lantern and I said well, how would this look with that and you know what this actually would look good so that's not that is if I want to change the look completely I could use that I can't believe I can't find a piece of gray linen in here Different. And sometimes 
I agonize over this. This is my heart stitch threads. I don't have that much. I have enough. But... And this is all muted colors. And they don't find anything. Anyway, I think you got the idea. So I'm going to have to search for this. So this is going to be put to the side and say, wow, I did not find the right linen. I'm going to find it. I do like this sort of grayish look, and I'm sure I have one in there somewhere that's going to fit the bill. All right. Enough of this. I wanted to show you a few things. I don't know if this video is getting to be too long, so. First thing I want to show you are these old Lee Ward's catalogs. Lee Ward's were, was the Hobby Lobby of its day. They're closed. These are the old kits. I want to show you, I don't think you're interested. I, I could go through this whole book and just sort of savor it. But I do <laughs> I do want to see if I could show you some old cross stitch stuff, if I can find it in here. If not, I'll show you something else. And some of this, of course, is, hmm, let's see. This was just the Christmas one. I had bought these because I collect the, the Lee Wards, uh, the, ah, the sequin ornaments kits, and I've made a whole bunch of them. Come Christmas, I'm gonna show you all of them. They're in a box. And just to let you know, here's like a bunch. But anyway, I bought this just so I can look at the ornaments and see which ones I have and see when they were made, and I know it's a little corny. They have cruel here, and I don't see any cross stitch. But I do see some really interesting things. Oh, this poor catalog is falling apart, but that's okay. Some interesting old sewing boxes, in case you see a sewing box and you want to know when it was made. This is 1972. And of course, I was a little kid. And just a lot of uh, some embroidery stuff, these little purses. I figured you'd get a kick out of this. I do. I could go through this whole thing with you. Maybe come Chris around Christmas, I might, because if I could stir some interest. Um, but they have a lot of cool stuff in here. Just awesome stuff. I wish Lee Wards was still around. I wish they still stole, sold all of this. Just real pretty, pretty things. 3D elevation art, paint on glass. Oh, remember I bought one of these? Those are kits, actually. You make those. <laughs> and this is an, this one I have found. Uh, this is a thrift store find. This is Women's Household Circle Christmas Annual. I bought it for the graphics. You don't get, that's just so Dickensy. But it's a little more contemporary than Dickens. The photograph in the back. And what year is this one from? This one is from 1966, which is the year I was born. Boy, am I feeling old. Oh my God, I'm looking at this thing. Oh, how ancient. And there's an awful lot of projects in here. This was a thrift store find and there's stuff about Christmas cards, memories. Um, I'm just going through this. All kinds of craft projects. And you're not going to be able to see this because it's in black and white. Or not black and white, but more pencil. And there's recipes. They don't make books like this anymore. They're so cool. Faux pas number two. So anyway, I pulled the wrong one. I, uh, I did want to pull another primitive needle and um, primitive needle and primitive stitcher magazine and this is the 2015. Like I said, I have a complete almost a complete set of these. I'm missing some of the first ones. I already showed you this one so that's why I want to show you a different one. Never too early to think. 
I will not show you the punch needle because this is about cross stitch. But I am going to show you the projects. And the reason I'm showing you the projects is this is a worthwhile magazine. And if you want to buy any of these, you, you can find these old issues. You, you can email them or go on their website. This one's by the Nebby Needle, and it's called Santa's Workshop. It's a little itty bitty thing. She has a, it's a key fob. See, she's got the key attached. And then this one is by La Dida, Lori Markovic, called Eve of St. Nicholas. Very simple. What fabric is that on? Cocoa, cocoa linen, I think that's Weeks. Weeks Dye Works, cocoa linen. You can do it on anything. This one is by Joyce Reed Folk Art called Just Christmas. Um, very frame. I'm sure a lot of you, unless you get this magazine, have not seen these because these are exclusive designs to this magazine. I'm always curious to see what the fabric is they use. And this is 32 count cream colored linen, which she aged with instant coffee and vanilla. So your linen cannot possibly look like that. Oop, I don't want to show you that. Cannot possibly look like that exactly because she aged it herself, so you can make your own linen. I'm curious to see whether or not she says to age it before or after. And she says, after. She aged it after. Instant coffee, vanilla. She uses two tablespoons of vanilla and two tablespoons of instant coffee. If you do this, do not use two tablespoons of vanilla. It's too much. It really is. You're going to be smelling vanilla forever, and that's very. And vanilla is expensive. Um, maybe a, a teaspoon and water, and spray it, and then allow it to dry, and then iron. And all that stuff is going to get on your iron, too, so just beware. Very pretty. God Jewel by Lori Lawson of LJ Fibers. Now, here's a, here's a thing where I don't like the linen that it's on. I don't like, I love the design. The problem with the linen is that you can't even read God Jewel because it's lost in this linen. So since it's light colored floss, I would use a darker linen. That's a good example of why you would change. This is tin roof. Unless it's some, and then the, the actual fibers, what is that white? It's parchment. I don't know, maybe it's just a picture. So you need a dark, I think you need a darker linen. But anyway, that's a good example. Um, this one is called, this is by Giliata Manfredi, Manfredini, I'm sorry if I mispronounce her name, and it's called Nancy, a Christmas Angel, and it's got a little of everything on it, it's an ornament. Complete instructions in here how to make this. Right now, Vana, Vana is doing the uh, instructions. What the heck is it? A created twist. The twisted stitcher. <laughs> Vana. And then this is, of course, the primitive hair. Merry Christmas. Um, and, of course, it's a Christmas hair. Really pretty. And I'm sure she does this on her own linen. No, she doesn't. It's on cappuccino linen. I don't know what cap cappuccino. I don't know. It is her linen. She makes a cappuccino linen, apparently. I don't know. I, I, I have it somewhere, I think. I've seen it. Cappuccino linen. Most of her stuff now is done on her own linen. In fact, all of it is. Uh, I Believe in Christmas by Manny de Donna. Simona Bus Guglieri, which... 
This is so cute. And look, of course, it's got the, the lace. How pretty. And I do like this linen, and I like the lace. And you could change out the lace to something real old and grungy looking or keep. And this linen is uh, Coco by Coco by Week Style Works. There's two of them in here done on Coco. And then this is Perfect Snow Snowman by Primitive Acorns. That's off. That's a cute too. I like the little pom pom mini pom pom trim. <laughs> Let me try to get it so your head isn't. Done on Murano Laguna linen. It's Italian linen. I don't think you can buy it. I don't know where you buy this from. I don't think you can buy it easily. And then this is Romy's Creations Primitive Christmas Angel Pin Cushion. Cute. Very, very cute. And that's done on white linen. Zweigart white linen which she says to age. Wet the fabric using a small clean, clean paintbrush or sponge brush, then wet the fabric using coffee dabbing around the edges. So she coffee dyes very gently because you see how it's very lightly done. She ages her linen. It's the second, third one in here that does that. Uh, Nikki's Creations Gear Ornament, probably on her own linen. Yep, and it says 32 count Nikki's Creations linen. It doesn't say which one, but she makes a whole bunch of them. That could be done on any old piece of linen. Interesting linen, that is. Very pretty. Doesn't, isn't that interesting? doesn't say which one. And that's it. And I just want to show you something. This is 2015. Will I go over 16, 17? Yeah, I will. <laughs> Eventually. This is 2015, and look how thick it is. And look at 2018. It's like twice as thick and twice as heavy. So they keep getting bigger and bigger. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. Um, I hope I haven't confused you more about how to pick linen for your fabric. What I want to stress is that you need to think outside the box. Look at, look at your, your item. Look at your guy. Uh, you see that guy? This is Tom, a not forgotten farm. And just to let you know, I found linen for him that, ha that doesn't look anything like the linen they call for. found this linen. Think outside the box. Try to pull your threads if you can. If you don't like the threads, um, don't change them all out. Try changing out just a few. Like change out the red or the blue or one of the brighter ones to something that's variegated. It, just add it in there if it's, if it's DMC. So don't like, don't just change everything and then get confused and does this one go with that just change out one or two of the linen of the threads and then put it on your linen and if you don't like the linen you want to jazz it up try you can try it against 20 different linens with me i have a whole box of it i could try it against 50 different linens but don't be afraid uh, to make a mistake i actually started a project on a piece of linen. It was the call for linen and I did about two weeks worth every day and I ripped it out because I hated it. It was just the wrong color. And you know, so after I, I did that last year and I said, well, you know, I'm not gonna do that again, but of course you will because sometimes you don't know until you start, until you start sewing it. But always have it in your head that you can mix and match, think, think, try something different. If there's a brand of linen you like, you know, look for different colors in it. 
and, um, and, and the whole goal of this is to have fun. So I hope you enjoyed my video tonight. It's a little of this and a little of that. And from my home to yours, keep stitching.